Greetings to all class 8 students. In our last video of our English class, we have completed Jody's chapter till the first part. What we have learnt in the first part was, Jody was very desperate to bring the phone home so that he can, so that he could raise it. He wanted to take the sole responsibility of the orphaned phone and he was supported by the family friends who were Forestie's uh, Meal Wheel and Dr. Wilson. He also got permission from his parents. He showed that he was prepared to negotiate with his share of milk. So, in short, what we can say about Jody is, Jody was a very thoughtful and a sensible young boy, right? Now, let's take the story further. We are going to do the second part today, right? I am sure everybody is ready with their textbook and they have a pencil in their hand. As and when, when you have to make a note, kindly underline uh, the important stuff in your textbook itself or if you are keeping a notebook you can make your notes in a notebook also right okay jody gave himself over to thoughts of the phone they passed the abandoned clearing now what is a clearing clearing is you know sort of an open place an open area uh, in the forest or in the woods with those wild shrubs and bushes and tall trees right which is surrounded by taller trees and then in the middle area this is uh, like a clear space you know an open space which is surrounded by tall trees so these two were off to find the phone and they reached uh, somewhere by an abandoned clearing right an open area there he said cut to the north meal wheel it was up here that pa got bitten by the snake and killed the door and i saw the phone so they reached exactly the same spot where the accident took place with mr buxter and he was bitten by the rattlesnake that was exactly the spot where the door was killed and the phone was seen last. The baby deer was seen in the same spot. Suddenly, Jody was unwilling to have meal wheel with him. If the phone was dead or could not be found, he could not have his disappointment seen. This is the first reason. And if the phone was there, the meeting would be so lovely and so secretive that he could not endure to share it right you have a question on the back why did jody not want meal wheel to continue the journey the continue to continue hunting for the phone now there are two reasons basically jody why jody did not want meal wheel to be with him all through his hunt the first reason was Jody did not want to share his happiness in case if the phone is found and the reunion with the phone would be so secretive, would be so happy that this moment he did not want to share with anyone. That was the first reason. The second reason was in case if the phone was not found, then what happens? He would be sad literally and he did not want to show this sadness to anyone so neither he wanted to share his happiness nor his sadness right so he wanted meal wheel to leave him just in the same spot right okay please underline this you have a question with regards to this underline this paragraph <clears throat> he said it's not far now but the scrub is very thick for a house. I can make it on foot. Now he again justifies that he is a grown-up boy. 
and though it is a dense to jungle, dense to wood, he still would be able to make his wa make his way home. He will find his house. So Milville did not need to worry for Jody. So this is what he consoled Milville and perhaps asked him to leave him in the same spot. But I am afraid to leave you, boy. Suppose you got lost or got bitten by the snake too. Now, Milwil is a responsible forester. He has managed the, you know, roaming about the jungles and he knew how to go about it. Jody being a small boy did not know how to go about it and he was worried for this young boy. He cared for the young boy. So he said to him that he could not leave him there in the jungle alone. What happens once he leaves him in case if he also is bitten by the rattlesnake, same like Mr. Buxter, or if he could not manage to find his own way back home, he perhaps may get lost in the jungle. So there are two possibilities that he did not want to leave Jody and there were two reasons why Jody wanted him to live, right? So you have to remember this you try to understand it so you don't have to remember it you understand why these two did not want to leave each other wherein Jody wanted him to go and Milville did not want him to go right okay I'll take care it might take me a long time to find the phone if he's wondered leave me off right here this is Jody's request to Milville. He says he did not need to worry for him. He will take care of everything. And he will also find the phone if the phone is still alive and has been wandering in that same area. Right. All right. But you take it easy now. You know north here and east that means he's showing the direction from where they have come in front of it north and back home. He is showing him the directions and asking him to remember and understand it well. There and there. See two times there and there. First there is for the different direction. Another is also for the different direction. That tall pine makes a bearing. Bearing here is, you know, sort of sign mark. Sometimes when you are uh, surfing through the jungle or if you have gone for mountaineering or you have to go to a place um, where you have never been, what will you do? You will make the sign marks, isn't it? Or you remember, okay, this is a landmark. This place is a mark for me. So what does, it works like a compass. You remember it and you come back to the same place. So what does he say? That that tall pine tree will be a bearing. That means it is going to be a sign mark for you. Right? So long. So long means goodbye. Goodbye, Milville. I'm obliged. I shall always remain grateful to you. Right? Okay. And from here, they both parted from each other. He waited for the sound of the hooves to end. Hooves is the plural form of hoof. What is a hoof? The horny part of the horse's foot. Right? The thick part, the stony part. Right. So he waited for the hooves, the sound of the hooves to end. That means he waited till meal wheel was gone. Till far. Right? Then cut to the right. Then he started his <coughs> searching for the phone. The scrub was still, the scrub here refers to the jungle, the surrounding area, the dense forest was still, still refers to silent. The surrounding was silent. Only his own crackling of twigs sounded across the silence as he walked. Only the sound of his feet and the breaking of those tender twigs under his feet as he walked was heard. 
everything else was quiet. He wondered for an instant if he had mistaken his direction. Well, this is likely that he perhaps uh, could lose his direction because he was a small boy and he never had come to this jungle before. Right? So, it was only when they killed the door the fawn was seen by them. They were not used to surf round the jungle. So it was likely for the young boy to have gotten lost at that point of time when he was looking for the fawn. Right. Now suddenly what happens? What does he see there? When a buzzard rose in front of him and flapped into the air. What is a buzzard? Buzzard is, you know, a vulture-like bird that survives on the dead bodies, the carcass of, uh, you know, the dead animals and the birds and um, they prey on it. You know, they eat the flesh and they survive. So what did he see? Just when he was thinking if he was lost or not or has he forgotten the direction again? Suddenly he saw a buzzard flew in front of him and flapped into the air. Now the presence of a buzzard there, that showed that there was a presence of a dead body. Right? Otherwise the buzzards will not be there. Right? He came into the clearing under the oaks. So he came back again to the abandoned clearing which he has already passed by. And what did he see? The buzzards sat in a circle around the carcass of a door. Alright. So they were all having their feast. Right. They were all eating the dead body of the door. They turned their heads on their long scrawny necks and hissed at him. You see they did not expect a young boy walking towards all of them and disturbing their feast. So what did they do? They all hissed. Hissing is a, a sound word. They showed their anger by hissing at him. Scrawny, scrawny that is not very attractive, very rough, you know, like a craggy neck. What did he do? He threw his bow at them and they all flew into an adjacent tree. Now, as soon as he saw that they were all feasting on the dead body of the door, he hurled, he threw a bow. A bow is a tender branch of the tree. He was holding in his hand. He just threw it in front of them and they all flew into the nearby trees, right? On the pine trees, on the oak trees. They all went and sat there on the tree. The sand showed large cat prints but the big cats killed fresh and they had left the door to the carrion birds. Now the carrion birds are those birds. Uh, the, carrion, uh, the carrion is the flesh of the dead body. Right? It seems the wild animals like lions and tigers and you know, jaguars, those who live in the jungle, they must have had their pre. They must have hunted freshly. They must have eaten already. And they left the leftover flesh to the birds like buzzards and vultures there. Right. Now, he parted the grass at the place where he had seen the fawn. That means he had already passed by the place where there was a possibility of fawn wandering there. The fawn was left there in the jungle. Perhaps the fawn was also anxious, was looking for the mother here and there. So wherever there was a possibility, Jodi kept on visiting those places in the jungle in case if the fawn was wandering there, he could have uh, caught it right it did not seem possible that it was only yesterday 
now see since the doe was killed a day before and the very next day jody had come to look for the fawn the baby deer um it was very much possible that because the mother was killed in the same spot perhaps the baby was wandering in the same area so if it was the case then he could have been caught by jody very easily right the phone was not there but jody kept on looking for it but he was unable to find him he circled the clearing that means the same area where the doe was killed there was no sound and no sign he could not see the footprints of him he could not see any signs whether a phone had been there or not there was no clue left for him the buzzards clacked their wings impatient to return to their business so their business was to eat up the leftover flesh of the dead doe they were waiting they had to finish their food so they all were waiting for jody to leave so they were flapping their wings he returned to the spot where the fawn had emerged and dropped on all fours right dropped on all fours that refers to that he ran away on all four legs rushed like anything yes he came back to the same spot again and again to look for the fawn in case he was found there because this was the same place the fawn was emerged emerged here means shown he was seen there once okay studying the scent for the small hoof prints he was looking for the hoof prints of his hooves uh, because perhaps it was rainy it must have rained so in the sand if the big cat's paw prints were there then definitely the hoof prints also should be there so he was looking for it the night's rain have washed away all tracks except those of cats and buzzards well the fawn is small baby deer even if he must have running he must have ran here and there hep hazardly with no clue looking for the mother then his hooves and his prints would have been there in the sand but it must have rained heavily perhaps so the small prints were washed away so that means uh, jody's search was you know slowly becoming impossible it was very difficult for him to find the phone because all the signs were washed away whether the phone has been in that clearing or not so this is what we have learned so far in the second part right that how desperately jody was looking for the phone he wanted to save this moment of happiness the moment of reunion so he sent him away see a lot of risk he is taking as a small boy he does not want his happiness to be seen he does not want his sadness to be seen his disappointment uh, he just wants to be re he, he wants to be reunited with the phone somehow because he wants to raise it see he wants to take the place of the mother the do uh, and he has been permitted to do so from his family right so it speaks of see in this part a very good character sticks of jody have come up that not only a thought ball thought bo- uh, thoughtful boy but he was a responsible also because he felt for the orphaned phone these days who really involves themselves into this sort of business of raising an animal in the house but it was jody who felt so deeply and he developed a soft corner for this phone 
and therefore he decided that in absence of the mother it is the bucksters and uh, he has to look after the baby deer right so he whatever he did he wanted to do it at his own sole responsibility leaving his own share of food uh, you know looking for the phone so desperately alone in the jungle convincing the parents if he can bring the phone home all such things show what it speaks of all such things speak of his personality him as a good boy right so that you all these things you have to remember when it has to come to write a character sketch of jody they all will come handy to you right now let us discuss some questions are given there at the end of this part comprehension check second first question jody did did not want meal wheel with him for two reasons what were these reasons well we had discussed and you also had underlined the reason that uh, the reasons why he did not want meal wheel to be with him is he did not want to share his happiness in case if the phone was found nor he wanted to show his sad face in case if the phone was not found right so he did not want himself to be feeling embarrassed before meal wheel so that is why he let him go second question says why was meal wheel afraid to leave jody alone well meal wheel was afraid to leave jody alone for two reasons first if he was bitten by the rattle snake too or if he lost his way back home from the jungle both cases were difficult to handle with because the father had already been bitten once by the rattle snake and he did not want the same thing to be happening with jody right so for these two reasons he did not want meal wheel jody to leave to be left alone in the jungle right so what we have learned so far is bucksters were ready to raise the phone and in the second part their search is continued in the jungle to find the orphaned phone now in the next video what happens in the story next is uh, the phone is going to be found and not only um is found but how the phone is going to be looked after that you are all going to learn in next video see when we own an animal when we have a house pet in our house is it sufficient simply to bring them home are we not responsible for them we are responsible to take them out we are responsible to take them feed them in time to play with them to make them homely not to you know um, abuse them in any manner so all such things we have to we have to feel that we are going to be accountable to isn't it simply bringing a house pet in the house is not enough you have to take care of that small pet whoever you have brought in the house you going to be responsible for them for their food for their shelter for their uh, you know if they feel in case lonely you have to take them for a walk out all such things are uh, you know going to be needed and they have to be done by the owner so simply if jody brings the phone home is not going to be sufficient the phone is not used to live in the house it is meant to live in the wild so the phone has to learn the ways as to how to live in the house with the family members human family members so jody has to teach him everything simply bringing him home is not going to be enough so that is what you will learn in the next part okay i want you all to do your comprehension check understand it and write it in your cw and keep learning you can also read the third part 
and we will meet up again on friday and take the chapter ahead right thank you for